All right, thank you everybody for your patience. This is the CBCRM 101 webinar that takes place on a monthly basis to introduce new users, implementers, developers uh, to the wonderful uh, ecosystem that uh, we all enjoy working with. Uh, so thank you to CBCRM.org for organizing and uh, putting together uh, these monthly events. And uh, these events are being recorded so that if you would like to review the video, uh, the link will be available after the conclusion of the webinar. So to kick us off today, if anybody would like to tweet or reference this back, you can use the hashtag CDCRM or um, use the at square, which is uh, the today's organizer. As far as the audience goes, we have uh, people participating here today from US, Canada, Mexico, New Zealand, uh, Greece, Jamaica, Australia, Turkey, Spain, and Brazil. So we truly have a global audience here today. Uh, that means that it's uh, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon for all around the globe here. Um, to take a look at what uh, we have on the menu today, uh, we'll take a look at why uh, you might want or need CDCRM. What are some of the key features that uh, could be uh, of interest to you? What are the different components of CDCRM of the underlying CDCRM system? And uh, we'll also uh, look at a number of uh, use case scenarios. Uh, so the CRM system, City CRM, what does the C stand for? Well, uh, a lot of different people have a lot of different perspectives of what that could stand for. Uh, some of that is because the C stands for a client, some of it is customer, some of it is constituent, or at the very base level, um, it is uh, basically a contact. Um, these uh, relationship, and that's why it's called the relationship management system, is simply because in the past it used to be that your organization would be in the middle and you would have your contacts or constituents all around you and they would interact directly with you. However, uh, in recent years this has started to change where your organization is becoming more or less part of the community and a lot of the interactions are, might be actually happening either directly between the members or in parallel. Um, that basically brings us to a place where you've got your website in the middle and uh, oftentimes within your organization somebody will set up PayPal to let's say accept donations or event registration payments. Uh, they may set up uh, evites. They might uh, take advantage of what Salesforce has to offer in terms of organizing contacts. They might go to authorize.net as another payment processor. They might set up uh, some groups on Yahoo or Google and uh, as you can see pretty quickly, uh, you have a big potential issue on hand that, uh, that says, so that asks, begs the question pretty much, uh, of where exactly does your data live? Um, so it's very difficult uh, to understand who manages your data. If somebody gives you a donation in one of these systems and then registers for an event on Evite and then participates in a forum elsewhere, how do you tie these three independent contacts that might, uh, might or might not share an email address, how do you tie these all together? Well, the answer from the perspective of CDCRM, of course, is that is the answer. CDCRM is the answer. And uh, it's a open source, free to download, free to no license fees involved system that uh, allows for um, sharing these contacts, event registrations, and many other functions. It works with other open source content management systems such as Drupal, WordPress, and Joomla. And it's really more than a module but less than a full-fledged distribution. Uh, it's really a platform. It started over 11 years ago in 2004 and uh, came from a nonprofit background. So compared to a lot of other CRM systems, uh, CityCRM is a uh, system that's specifically targeted at uh, nonprofit, other nonprofit organizations, membership organizations, professional associations, educational institutions, um, activists, etc. Um, 
CDCRM is an open source, it's an internationalized and web-based system, and uh, it integrates directly uh, with the website. Um, in the real world, as I mentioned, the, these are associations, activists, schools, and businesses that utilize this system. And uh, there are a number of organizations from uh, local clubs um, to the Sierra Club to Wikimedia Foundations and many others um, that utilize this system. Um, the contacts that are being tracked in the system could be members, clients, volunteers, donors, or affiliates. Um, any one of these uh, can have its own set of uh, data fields that are being tracked within the system. It can be set up in different groups. They can be uh, filtered on, etc. cetera. Um, these contacts can uh, also be segmented further. There could be relationships created. So when you're trying to allow a particular access to a website that only uh, applies to a specific level of membership, for example, or that membership takes place at a, an organization level and a certain number of uh, contacts need to have access based on that corporate sponsorship, that is very much possible here. Uh, you can track activities and set reminders. So this is a full-fledged CRM system that helps you organize, maintain, and track your contact and the database. Uh, the key features that uh, we're talking about here is number one, it's extensible, which means you're getting a very solid platform which you can download, install, and uh, start running with uh, pretty much out of the box. But uh, there is a great possibility to take what is available there and uh, extend it beyond what's offered to match and to customize to your specific uh, use case scenario. It integrates with content management systems, as I mentioned, WordPress, Google, and Joomla. It synchronizes the user between the CMS and uh, the database so that you know specifically who is uh, perhaps logging into your website and which contact that goes into. It allows a lot of great import and export functionality, and it has a uh, integrated search function within the CRM system. The additional key features here are that uh, you can install additional modules that take advantage of CCRM. It has a sophisticated API for uh, programming and development. It has a number of hooks that it uses. There is a healthy extension ecosystem, which are effectively mini apps that take advantage of the underlying data and can produce reports or add-on functionality. Um, there is availability to synchronize roles and groups so different contacts and different levels of contacts can have different permissions on the website when they're accessing it from the front end. Um, there is also integration, for example, in Drupal with uh, custom fields, with views, uh, with commerce applications, so that when people are purchasing uh, something like Drupal Commerce or Overcard, and of course, a flexible search. Along with this goes access control, which basically means that different contacts can be grouped differently and can be given different access control, whether that is to the front-end website or to the back-end uh, database. So on the front-end, that would, for example, imply uh, different membership levels or different organizational structures. Um, and as people access the website, they might get a different level of access to certain site, parts of the website. On the back end, that might mean that with volunteers or with staff within an organization, uh, certain areas or certain individuals might be limited to seeing certain fields, and others may not, uh, may not have those accessible. For example, sensitive data such as date of birth, social security numbers, or uh, income levels, or other custom fields, all of these can be uh, put under access control and limited, have limited access to them by personal role. As I just mentioned, there is a cool option to set up custom profiles, and those profiles can contain custom fields so that additional data uh, can be kept track of. And again, this is at uh, the level of individual contact, individual events, donations, etc. So they're associated with the different entities uh, that are present within CVCRM. There is a uh, dedupe functionality, so good data hygiene 
obviously starts with uh, what's being put into the database. And as the data is going in, uh, there are certain rules to, be, to avoid duplicate data. Or these can be uh, run independently after the data is already in database or regularly on a periodic basis to avoid uh, data duplication and, and data splintering. There is uh, very sophisticated tracking of contacts, of registrations, of uh, anything that uh, might have been changed on the contact. So there is a number of logging options available. And uh, mapping for purposes of uh, producing directories, searches, etc. So the, let's take a look at what the components are. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, these individual components so they contribute to your member city event and city mail. And uh, then we'll also uh, spend a significant portion of this uh, one hour webcast on addressing some questions and providing you with some answers. So City Contributes City Members, City Event, and City Mail are probably kind of the flagship components of City CRM. There are additional components such as City Report, City Pledge, City HR, City Case, City Grant, and as I already mentioned, a number of extensions available from, uh, that can be downloaded online that extend the functionality. In the core component, City Contribute, um, takes care of the donations and pledges. It has the ability to take online donations and link up with uh, your choice of payment processor. Some of the uh, regularly used ones can be PayPal Standard or PayPal Pro, uh, Authorize.net, many others, um, both used in North America, Europe, and other parts of the world. And as I've already mentioned, there is an API available so that if the need and desire is there, to extend it to a specific payment processor that may not be supported at this moment. Um, this is available in terms of a plug and play capability. Um, online and offline donations can be tracked. Uh, this basically means that uh, when somebody creates a donation contribution online, that's obviously automatically recorded. But oftentimes people still provide their contributions in an offline format, whether that's uh, at an event, in the form of cash or check or other means, which uh, the system allows for to record these, uh, these transactions as well so that it's all captured in one master database. Um, whether that contribution is online or offline, uh, receipts are available and customizable. And as I mentioned, there is a number of plugins available um, as far as payment processors, and uh, other functionality. So if you're trying to collect additional data, if you're trying to engage specific payment processors, if you're trying to tie a contribution to uh, perhaps some rewards or bonuses, all of this can be set up within the City Contribute system. Looking at the City Member module, this is a module that allows to capture any kind of membership. And we've seen it used in basic membership as in annual memberships, which might be either fixed, which goes, let's say, January 1st to December 31st basis, or in terms of rolling, which basically means from the date somebody joins, that membership rolls for 365 days. Uh, we've seen it also used uh, in terms of subscription services, uh, where people have set up uh, the um, simple um, subscription for a particular delivery. Uh, there is notification, self-subscription availability, and a lot of rules to set up. So for example, a number of organizations may not want to disconnect uh, access to their members on the first day where they've missed their membership payment, um, which means they can be put into what's called a grace period, and their access might be either curtailed or extend it on a grace basis for a certain number of days. Uh, this can be synced with your content management system to provide custom access. Uh, there is a number of uh, email notifications that can be sent out with uh, perhaps individual links so that a one-click renewal is uh, in place and somebody gets an email that says, in a couple of weeks your membership is about to lapse. Uh, please renew by clicking here. Once they click through to the page, it May, uh, the ability is there to pre-fill um, their 
form with their information that's already found in the database. The user can now either adjust or confirm those changes and renew their membership effectively from one screen with one click. All right, moving along to the next one, which is city events. Uh, this is a participant registration and tracking system. Uh, it can create multitude of events. Uh, if you registered online for this webinar, you were using a city event uh, registration functionality. Uh, before we started this meeting, I was able to pull up a participant list that uh, showed me who registered from what type of organization, uh, where those people are coming from, and I was able to review all uh, of the information that was submitted during the process. Likewise, um, it is possible to print out uh, name tags and badges. Uh, you can also do offline import of other registrations so that again, CDCRM can become kind of the master, master database that uh, keeps track of uh, everything else that is happening within your organization. Important in the event is the ability to set up price sets and discounts. So for example, if you're registering for a paid event, and as you saw with this webinar, this was a free event, so there was no payment. Um, the event registration can include a payment, and those payments can be split up in multitude of ways. Uh, there could be discounts, there could be uh, coupons, there could be price sets. Uh, so a price set or a discount uh, could be used, for example, with an early bird registration. So if somebody registered by a certain date, they get $50 off of that particular, uh, that particular registration. But at a certain date, that price goes back to, quote unquote, a normal price. Um, receiving and emailing just like you probably received the reminder uh, and effectively a receipt, even though this webinar was for free, you got an email confirmation that you were registered. And then we followed up, we kind of combined it with CV Mail, which is the next module I'll mention here in just a moment. We followed up with a CV Mail functionality to send out email to just the people that registered for this event, remind them that they were registered, and then uh, follow up yet again just a few minutes before we started that uh, we're about to launch into the webcast. Uh, City events also can export these events into iCal or RSS. It integrates again with uh, the likes of Drupal into the calendar calendaring function that is available within that system. City mail at last uh, of kind of the big original modules. Um, City mail is effectively a bulk email, outgoing email system. Um, it uh, has the ability to obviously send out personalized emails with token. It keeps track of statistics. Uh, it allows for opt-outs and unsubscribes or even opt-in. Uh, you can keep track of opens, click-throughs, uh, forwarded emails. It has a robust subscribe, unsubscribe, bounce handling in place. And there is also an option to autofile outgoing emails so that um, as the emails do go out, you can have a link or an archive online on your website of all the different emails, for example, newsletters that might have gone out so that if somebody would like to review the historically archived uh, emails, they can do so on your own uh, website. All right, so that's a quick overview of where, what the functionality within CDCRM is. Uh, how do you take flight? How do you uh, go on? with implementing something like this? Well, first of all, uh, take, take a note and plan for what you're trying to do. Uh, this system is built, I like to say, as a Lego block, which basically means it can be put together in many different ways. It can be unwrapped from the box and used, but uh, usually there is uh, multiple different ways of accomplishing the same things. It just depends on your individual needs, how exactly you would like to put that together. Uh, I would also recommend that you budget uh, for deploying CDCRM in your organization. And that does not necessarily mean financial budgeting, but it means time-wise and resources. Um, you need to take into account uh, the resources it's going to take to clean up perhaps data before it's imported or to collect it from multiple sources where you might have spreadsheets and databases and other systems in which you're keeping track of uh, currently the, of the contact. 
Uh, you might have to identify commonalities of how you're going to deduplicate the data uh, between the different systems. Um, and certainly it is an option that if you are looking to engage a, in a professional implementer, uh, which there is numerous uh, freelancers and uh, professional providers out there that can help you with the implementation, perhaps initial or an ongoing support for CDCRM. Lastly, it is a process, it is a technology project, large or small, and it needs to be managed. Um, so having somebody who's done some type of project management or system migration, or having uh, somebody that has a particular knowledge of that kind of a process, it is helpful to have somebody like, uh, like that on a call, on standby, that can come in, chime in, and help uh, with some of the questions that might come up uh, during the process. Um, as I mentioned, the cost, again, these are not just costs in terms of financial, uh, but uh, there is implementation that it needs to be downloaded, set up. If you have somebody that's uh, well-versed with a LAMP stack or you already have a website running perhaps on uh, Amazon or other cloud VPS uh, offering, that might not necessarily be a hurdle to overcome. Um, there are costs to configuration as far as Again, setting it up the way you would like to set it up. Um, hosting is uh, certainly something that uh, should be paid attention to. Uh, this system is uh, something that uh, does okay initially, perhaps, on shared hosting, but uh, depending on the scale of uh, modules being used, the number of contacts, and the kind of functionality. If you're trying to import thousands of contacts or thousands of uh, certain type of records and uh, contributions, etc. Um, a shared hosting might not have enough horsepower to pull it off. So having something professional in place uh, is certainly recommended, and there are a number of offerings on CityCRM.org that can point you in the right direction in your evaluation. Um, likewise, I would encourage in terms of cost and hosting to ensure that you've got regular upgrades in place as well as backups. Uh, it cannot be overstated the importance of having proper backups in place because you just never know when technology uh, might take an unexpected turn you don't anticipate. And uh, if this is your master database, you definitely want to have several levels of backups that you can pull and uh, rely on. The, some of the greatest resources that uh, we would encourage you to check out is obviously cbcrm.org. From there, you can find the forums, which have been a very friendly and very helpful place for uh, many newcomers to this ecosystem. Uh, there is documentation that can be found in a wiki, which is more targeted towards the technical developer types. Um, there is a section on services, whether that's uh, hosting providers or implementers, if you are looking to engage one of those. And there is also an ebook available that you can uh, download in a variety of format or view online that will guide you through it. There is, that ebook is actually split up into two, place, two pieces or two sections, two, uh, two books almost, uh, you could say. One being, uh, towards, uh, being aimed towards the end users and one being aimed towards the administrators. I would also encourage you to take a look at demo.cvcrm.org uh, where you can see the system up and running in a live environment without having to download anything. Uh, please be aware that this is a publicly accessible system, so do not put any sensitive data in there. And uh, it also resets every so often, so do not expect to set something up and come back to it a week later and expect it to be there. Uh, it's a system that refreshes automatically on a, on a periodic basis, but it is an excellent uh, place where you can go right now, log in, and start playing around setting up contribution pages, event pages, uh, contacts, relationships, etc. Uh, we've also got a number of resources on Square.com, or you can contact us through there if you would like us to take a look at your particular implementation requirements and advise you uh, where, uh, where, what would be the right next steps. Um, that is demo.cdcrm.org, no www or you can go to square.com. Uh, the community is plentiful and very welcoming. Uh, it organizes a couple of annual events called CityCon. The next one is coming up at the end of April in Denver, Colorado. 
and there is usually another one later in the year, September, October timeframe, that usually takes place in Europe. It has been held in the United Kingdom, outside of London in the past. Um, so stay tuned for uh, the details of this year's CityCon in Europe. Uh, there is also a user summit that's generally organized in the Washington, D.C. area every fall around the end of September. There are a number of trainings available all across the world and online. You can also access uh, hashtag CVCRM, which um, will point you to in the right direction on Twitter. But this particular hashtag CVCRM is actually IRC. So if you are an IRC, look up the channel CVCRM. Uh, lastly, I would also encourage you to look up the uh, possibility of local meetups. There are uh, numerous, numerous uh, local meetups uh, going on around the world. And uh, there might be just one in your area that you might be able to attend and get some hands-on experience and FaceTime uh, with other users and implementers of CDCRM. Um, last but not least, uh, in terms of the community, on, uh, uh, at the end of January, the last week of January, all around the world, there is a City Day uh, being organized with a numerous events and numerous introductory seminars going on. Um, so I would encourage you to go online, citycrm.org, and look up City Day 2015, which is taking place the last week of January. Um, so that is as far as the presentation goes. We're just about at the halfway point of our presentation here. So that was brought to you by Square. Uh, my name is Peter Petrick, and uh, we're happy to answer any questions that might have uh, come up as, uh, as I've uh, gone through and uh, provided this presentation. Uh, we're going to pause here for just a moment, and um, in your meeting for Q&A, uh, there is a button that allows you to say, ask a question. Feel free to submit your question. We will review them and uh, answer them in just short order. Uh, it's going to be silent for about 30 seconds, and then we are going to start answering your questions directly about the usage, implementation, any kind of uh, questions you might have about CVCRM. We'll be right back. And we're back with CityCRM Webcast 101. And this portion is going to be questions and answers. If you wish to ask us a question, there is a button in your meeting burner window uh, that you can click. Uh, I believe it's labeled Ask a Question. It will pop up here on our end, and we will try to address your question uh, to the best of our ability here. Uh, the first question comes from Kyle, and he's asking about how difficult is CityCRM uh, to integrate into uh, their own website. Uh, such as a particular application stack. Uh, CVCRM is uh, built to run on a LAMP stack, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Um, I know in our experience we've seen it uh, running in some cases on Windows, which is not uh, an uh, awfully common scenario. Uh, Apache or Nginx are both supported, um, MySQL as well, and uh, PHP the recent versions are all good to go. 
So in terms of integration, you download the tar file from cbcrm.org slash download. Um, you install this, you do some configuration, set up the database, and uh, you should be able to uh, at least see the initial screen. Then it's a matter of tying it into if you have a content management system with which you wish to have it uh, working, uh, then uh, that's a whole separate in implementation and configuration. But in terms of getting it up and running on your application stack, if you can run uh, Drupal, WordPress, or Joomla content management system, uh, CDCRM is uh, about uh, about as, as needy as uh, any one of those uh, content management systems. The next question comes in from uh, Debbie. Uh, she is uh, uh, asking a little bit more about uh, training. Uh, trainings are held. Um, Trainings are held uh, at different times, uh, like I said, around the world, really. Uh, there, I know there are trainings in Europe and North America, uh, and there are some online train, trainings as well. Uh, so you can uh, access these if you go to cbcrm.org and look, at, look under events. I would also encourage you to go uh, to the CBCRM forums or jump on IRC in the CBCRM chat room there is always a number of people that are willing to point you to the right resources and provide uh, hands-on uh, advice. Uh, as far as specific training, again, a lot of the trainings are set up as webinars. Uh, the organization that you're working for might have its particular needs, in which case you might also look at uh, some specific providers that do ongoing support and maintenance for their existing clients and a number of them also provide training services, which is much more customized to your specific needs, uh, so that uh, as you're learning about CBCRM, it's not in general and generic terms as far as what it does out of the box, but uh, a specific, um, specific training plan can be devised for you uh, with your customized fields, customized screen, uh, specific data, and specific uses. Uh, if you've been watching the presentation from the start, uh, you can probably gauge that uh, the system is rather robust and has many different pieces. Um, in our practice at Square, we have uh, rarely seen a client that uses a large number of these uh, modules. Generally speaking, clients start out with a couple, three of them, continue perfecting their uh, expertise and usage of those, and then they start adding other functionality to it. So somebody might start just storing their contact, um, going to um, uh, going maybe to online donations, then graduating kind of to city events management, moving on to city mail, maybe uh, doing some custom reporting, etc. cetera. Uh, we'll take a quick pause here while we read through some of the other questions, and uh, we'll be right back to answering them. Okay, Michael is asking that uh, I reference not putting sensitive data and uh, whether I was referring to client data. Uh, what I meant about sensitive data, I uh, encourage people to go and check out the system if they haven't downloaded it yet or if they haven't, if, if uh, any of the participants today have not, uh, do, do not have a working copy of CityCRM in their own environment, um, I encourage them to go to demo.citycrm.org. Uh, which has a working copy on uh, multiple different content management systems available for your perusal. And so I was just encouraging people to go check it out, but I was discouraging them from putting sensitive data into that particular system because obviously it's a publicly available system that anybody can access. So as you're testing through the screens, um, do not enter any real data in there that you would not want to have exposed uh, to the rest of the world. The next question comes from Robert. Thank you for that. Uh, why install CDCRM on a separate database? And uh, so this gets a little bit more technical, but uh, we'll address it, and uh, hopefully everybody will uh, bear with us. Uh, CDCRM requires MySQL database, just like a Joomla to for CDCRM installation would. Uh, one option is to install it into the same database as the content management system. 
Another option is to install it separately. Um, there is a multitude of uh, reasons why to install it on a separate database. Performance might be one of them, the number of tables, the amount of data, uh, the read write uh, inserts, reads that are going on within the database, um, as well as uh, perhaps you might want to have it on a different database server if it's a, if it's a larger database. Uh, so there is a number of reasons why installing on a separate database a lot of times makes sense. That doesn't mean it has to be installed on a separate database server or even in a separate database instance. Um, but uh, frankly, in our experience, we haven't found uh, uh, almost any reasons to intermix the, for example, a Drupal and CVCRM tables in one database. So our preference and our recommendation is always to keep them separate. It works either way. Um, it just uh, allows for separation, especially when it comes down to debugging or trying to narrow down a certain issue or there is uh, perhaps some kind of performance uh, going on. Uh, having a separate database is uh, generally proven uh, better for, uh, for the clients and in our experience uh, in terms of debugging and addressing those issues. All right, we'll catch up with a couple more questions here and we'll be right back. All right, questions keep coming in. Uh, if uh, you uh, would like to follow up to one of these questions or the answers that we've provided, uh, we've got another 15 minutes and uh, happy to stay on and address uh, anybody's uh, questions or clarifications if you would like to have them. In your meeting burner window, you should have a button that says ask a question. Uh, when you click on that and type in your questions, we'll see it on our administrative end uh, that pops up and uh, we will uh, try to address your question to the best of the knowledge uh, that we can provide here. Uh, so Megan asked a question and asked, as a, asked a very good question, which says, is there any step-by-step -step guide for setting up and configuring CDCRM? Again, I would encourage you to go to cdcrm.org, and if you want the, the real shortcut here, I would encourage you to go to book, B-O-O-K, dot cdcrm.org, and there are uh, three different links on that book. One is User and Administrator Guide, uh, one is uh, Documentation Wiki, and one is uh, Developer uh, Documentation. Um, each one of these has its own specific uh, target market, if you will, of who it's targeted for. And uh, I will put up a window here, hopefully, that will allow us to um, see the uh, resource. All right. So there is demo. Uh, I'm sorry, book.cdcrm.org, and these books: User and Administrator Guide, um, Developer Documentation, Documentation Wiki. This is an official book for users and administrators. Uh, when you click through to it, it will show you how this has been uh, laid out, and it starts with how to prepare, how to initially set it up what the advanced configuration is, the user interface, how you can organize your data, uh, common workflows, and then it delves into the specific modules such as uh, contributions, pledges, events, memberships, emails, uh, SMS, uh, outgoing SMS messaging, reporting, case management, campaign surveys, petitions, civic engagements, grants, uh, how it integrates with the CMS, where to find more in terms of CVCRM community, and additional appendices. Um, I have personally worked on uh, clarifying this book and putting it together, and we at Square have contributed uh, quite a bit uh, to the uh, community knowledge base here. So uh, I certainly encourage everybody to check out book.cvcrm.org as your initial uh, play to get a step-by-step -step step -step guide for setting up and configuring CVCRM. We're going to read a couple more questions here and uh, answer them shortly.
All right, the next question here is uh, CityCRM, does it provide its own web UI, web user interface, or does it require you to interact with it through a CMS? Uh, this question comes in from Kyle. Um, excellent uh, point, Kyle. Uh, CityCRM at this point requires a, CDCRM, uh, a CMS overlay, uh, which can be either WordPress, Drupal, or Joomla. There are some different levels of available integration depending on the underlying CMS. Um, I would say that uh, in vast majority, and we have a number of clients that only use the CDCRM part and they do not use the CMS for the front end, uh, which basically means that what is available is you can put in a, a bare bones CMS system on the front end and then just utilize CDCRM, which is make the CDCRM the front page of the system so that as soon as an authenticated user logs in, uh, they, all of the functionality of CDCRM is available to them. Uh, from my experience and my discussions with the core team and our uh, contributions back to the ecosystem, uh, the decision was made several years back in terms of not continuing to duplicate effectively efforts over user interface, let uh, Drupal, Joomla, and WordPress carry that torch and instead of focus on the back end functionality, um, whether it's uh, specific to the database or to the contact interaction that needs to be done. So you can do a very lightweight front end. Uh, like I said, there are slight differences between uh, what each one of the three content supported content management systems offers. Uh, that's WordPress, Joomla, or Drupal. Um, WordPress, in, at a very high level, I would say offers probably the easiest plug and play, but there are some limitations because of what WordPress can and can't do. Uh, on the opposite side of that is Drupal which might be just a touch a little bit more involved to uh, first get up and running, but offers many more options for uh, growing with your organization, integration, APIs, etc. So uh, I would certainly encourage you to look at it in that sense. As I said, we have a number of clients that are running CDCRM uh, on top of a Drupal shell. Uh, they have their own website separately. They just have a the CRM set up on a subdomain separately that they use through this kind of user interface. The next question comes in uh, from Kim, and she asks, uh, can we do any enhancements, upgrades, or new versions? Are these provided to the users? And uh, the short answer is absolutely. Uh, the CRM has a specific release cycle of minor and major versions. Uh, every time these come out, uh, current databases are upgradable. Uh, with the asterisk of uh, presuming that customizations are done in compliance with the API standards, et cetera, uh, then everything should be forward uh, upgradable. If you're using what I would call the stock out-of-the-box implementation of CDCRM, then uh, there is really no issue in terms of upgrades. Um, so anytime new functionality comes out, uh, as we've been doing this for many, many years, we've seen um, enhancements to existing functionality or completely new functionality be introduced, and uh, our clients always uh, enjoy having uh, something new and something more useful in front of them. So definitely enhancements and upgrade are available and applicable uh, to anybody using the underlying system. The next question comes in from Linda. Um, you mentioned to, uh, to do some backups and uh, this is just verifying the assumptions of uh, doing backups. Uh, most definitely, any backups uh, are good, um, and the uh, only thing better than backups is multi multiple backups. Um, this becomes CVCRM, just like your website or anything that's uh, living out in the cloud. Uh, it is out there on servers, etc., and it might be provider error, it might be um, rogue forces out on the internet, it might be a lot of different things that may happen um, that might impact the accessibility of your data, and I would strongly encourage anybody doing anything on the internet, not just to the CRM, to have strong backups of their systems. Um, that being said, with CDCRM, CRM, uh, this basically boils down to any custom code you might have done, and of course, a, uh, the data, backing up the database, which if you are hosting your system uh, with a reputable company, um, you should inquire how to either set this up uh, yourself, with perhaps with their assistance, or in the case of Square, we do hosting and we also do maintenance and backups and ongoing 
uh, maintenance for our client system as part of our offering. So uh, it basically becomes a set it and forget it kind of a uh, kind of a relationship for our clients. They don't have to worry about it. They know they always got the latest and greatest. That uh, there is multiple different uh, servers on which their data is actively being backed up. There are snapshots being taken, etc. So I would strongly encourage have a backup strategy in place, and not just have a backup strategy in place, but have a strategy that allows you to recover from these backups, which means testing them and uh, making sure that what you think is a valid backup actually does work. Um, last asterisk on, in terms of uh, backups, please keep the backups off of your main web server. So wherever you are hosted, make sure that you occasionally download or regularly really download uh, these database snapshots uh, because again, if uh, this particular uh, data set goes away or that server were to go away for any type of reason, um, it could be something as benign as uh, getting to update your credit card expiration date. And uh, that server might be just turned off. And I know you think it, may, it will never happen to you, but uh, in the few years that we've been doing this, we've seen this more than once happen where um, unexpectedly people lose access to their server. and uh, with that access goes their data. So that's not a fun conversation to have. Again, it's nothing specific to CDCRM. It's more of a uh, best practice uh, for cloud hosted or web hosted or, or, or online uh, data that, uh, that you should be uh, paying attention to. The next question comes from Megan. Uh, the inquiry, the question is, is CDCRM available in Spanish? Yes. CDCRM is internationalized. It is available in Spanish, uh, and it is also available in multiple different languages. I would encourage you to go to cdcrm.org and look through the internationalization section. That will show you all the different languages, and you would be surprised some of the languages that CDCRM is available in. So CDCRM is definitely fully supportive of multiple languages. It's internationalized, and uh, we know of many uh, different companies and organizations uh, that are working with CDCRM all across the world um, and providing support and providing services to their constituents uh, in their native languages. All right, we've got about five more minutes here uh, on the clock for the webinar. Um, Still open to more questions. If anybody would like to uh, type in a question in the corner of your screen, there should be a button that says Ask a Question. Feel free to click it and ask us a question. Uh, we'll go on mute here for just a second, uh, review any questions that may come in, and address them before we wrap up for the hour. Well, either we've done a great job of uh, answering the questions, or perhaps the presentation before was informative to there isn't uh, that many questions left. Uh, we don't see anything else coming in at the moment. So I would like to thank all, your, all the participants for dialing in today and participating, asking questions. And uh, we certainly hope to see you on CityCRM.org. Uh, please say hello in the forums. Let people know how you found out about CityCRM, or perhaps that you participate in this webinar. Um, if you need any information uh, with regards to CDCRM, um, feel free to reach out to me personally. My name is Peter Petrick. Um, I am on uh, cdcrm.org. Uh, you can go to square.com and use the contact form. Uh, feel free to send, us a, a, send me a note personally. Uh, I always enjoy to hear from uh, users. I always enjoy hearing from users from other uh, people that are in the CDCRM community. And if you have a particular question that you feel like is very specific to your implementation, um, we're always glad to introduce people and show them the, the possible path uh, to using CDCRM and making sure that it uh, fits their needs. So thank you again for participating. We hope to see you 
the download and use of CBCRM is free, so we hope you give it a try. Go to demo.cbcrm.org or contact us at square.com, and uh, we look forward to interacting with you in the future. Thank you so much, and have a great rest of the day, afternoon, or evening, wherever in the world you might be. Thank you.